Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at the changes made to the Very Audio tool in Cubase 10. So if you've not used this before then you may want to look elsewhere for other videos done on Very Audio but Very Audio is a way of easily editing pitch in your audio and not just the basic pitch in terms of semitones but also micro intonation and so on. So I'm just going to take a look at how that has changed and it's much more usable than it used to be. This is a real step forward. So here's a vocal. Uh, I'll only play a bit of it because we don't want any uh, copyright hits or anything like that. So this is uh, a melody you'll probably recognise. Some folks inherit stars, spangled eyes. So you can hear there and see what's been done with the analysis. So Cubase has analysed this so initially when you open up this and it will do some analysis on it. And you can see what it thinks the basic note is, but also the intonation in there. I say this is all fairly standard, very audio stuff, but the new mode works much more cleanly. It's much easier to use. Uh, it's much more intuitive. And also if you're altering timing, as we'll see, it saves you having to change between tools, which was what you were doing quite a lot of uh, previously. So this is much more like... It's much more like the smart tool in Pro Tools, which is one thing, the, probably the one thing I really miss about uh, Pro Tools. But there we go. That's another story. Anyway, um, so if we click on the Edit Very Audio, we can see uh, by default we get this colour-coded for the pitches. And if we hover over it, we can see on each uh, note block, which is here, we get four handles. So I'm just going to zoom in on this note. This note is of particular interest, I think, because it's going to demonstrate... Uh, a number of things. So you can now directly access um, the the main things you want to do because often what you want to do is either straighten the pitch curve on a note or quantize it to the nearest pitch. So firstly we'll look at uh, the straightening the pitch curve. So that handle there, if we click that, it starts off at zero and we drag it down which makes sense because you're flattening out the curve. So that note there goes from the original intonation there, and you can see there's a fair old wobble, which we will look at in a bit, and pulling that all the way down. So rather than having to go over here and play around with that, you can just do that directly. So we could just straighten out completely for that hideous T-Pain vibe. Some folks inherit stars, span. Yeah, or somewhere in between. Now, there's a bit too much. He kind of overshoots the note, and as a result of this, uh, Cubase is kind of misanalyze this because the pitch should actually be higher than it, it is and this leads us to using the quantized pitch so quantized pitch here again if we zoom in we see as you move to quantize that that's moving down i'm just going to change the vertical scale so we can see that a bit better as i do it but as we move down you see it moves down to g sharp and that's not actually the note it is it should be an a but we'll we'll come to that in a bit so this often happens with uh, pitches because the the average probably is down here. You can see most of the curves, but it should it should be up there. And he doesn't quite he doesn't quite make it if you listen to it. So you can do that. You can also move this around. Now you can either move it by semitones, which is normally a bit too much, but if you just click and drag within the note block and move it, that's what happens. Or if you hold down the shift key you can move it to anywhere you want and you see once we've gone over the halfway point it decides it's an A. So then we can maybe take some of the intonation out of it and leave it sounding still sounding realistic. I mean I've done this before uh, for singers where they haven't been present when I've been uh, editing it etc and done these kind of fixes and left intonation in there and they, they don't comment and say oh you've robbed all the life out it's like oh it's it's nicely in tune etc so as long as you're subtle with these tools they don't have to sound say like share t-pain insert wrapper of choice here and so on they can sound so uh sort of natural that, that even the performer won't realize that it's been done so it's not a case of just oh i'm going to highlight everything and just quantize everything to death you've got to be a bit subtle and the, the quality of people's voices is really in the fact that they can be slightly out of tune and there can be all these micro intonations, which is one of the many reasons why we still haven't managed to synthetically produce effective singing voices yet. But anyway, so now we've got this. Some folks inherit stars, spangled eyes. It's maybe a little bit sharp, but you can play around with that. So you can see this is really nice and easy to use now. Now, the another change is timing. Now, the, the singer in this case is reasonably in time, but just to show you what you can do, 
Now, if you grab the end or the beginning, so either the end there or the beginning, we can do that and you can hopefully see in the background the, the waveform is moving as well. So we're, we're doing warp, whereas previously you'd go to audio warp and then put in some handles and drag about and then come back here and reanalyze and play around. So it makes it much easier for you to do this. So I'll just undo that back to where it was. But yeah, you can move these around and do all of your audio warp and in place time stretching to get the timing right much more easily say it's it saves a lot of mouse mileage of playing around with different tools you know even if you were using a toolbox it was tedious but that's those improvements on their own make things much easier now you can also slice these segments up so sometimes it will misanalyze things and what it sees as one note you might want to treat as two you can still cut that up you hold down the alt key and then click and then it will then treat them separately and then you can drag this you know, around wherever you want obviously this is going to sound terrible if i do that stars but those kind of things you can do quite easily now if you hold down the alt key and then drag this we can now make it so we can change where those note segments begin so i could make that lead up belong to this one rather than there and so on so again that's really nice and easy to do now so those are your four main tools now that's in smart controls as they call it default mode now if you go into all mode this is like pro stroke scary mode instead of having the four square handles that you see appear there we get uh, loads <laughs> loads of them so there's uh, 11 there so we've got the four that we had before but we've got some extra controls as well and fortunately you get tool tips on them so they're the kind of things most of the time I don't think you're going to want them most of the time you're going to be in just the default mode but having access to these is is quite nice so you can with this one you can shift the format so you can change the format of that note so that will change the tone of it without changing the pitch stars so you can go for all those, um, well, if we go to the extreme, obviously it will sound Stars. bizarre. But yeah, so if you've, you've got quick access to those kind of changes, which on sometimes you want to change the tone of a note because it might sound a little odd and that can help with that. At the bottom right, we've got the volume. So you can change the volume of individual segments, which again can be really useful, particularly once you chop blocks up and change them there will occasionally be transients which are you know undesirable and while you can do it elsewhere with chopping those segments up and altering their volume this makes it really quick and easy to do then in addition to those we've got the range for straightening the pitch curve so at the moment the whole thing is being done with straight pitch so if i show you what i mean by that if i really straighten this down so we we go for t-pain mode and then we drag this across what you can do is allow the first part of the note to be the original inflection so this is like a fade in for the straightening of pitch so you see we get this initial inflection and then after that this will be varied less so sometimes the initial part of that note you want that maybe an overshoot etc and you can do this really easily and the same follows for that handle there so if you want the end of the note so quite often the middle of the note can be the the problem area and you want that humanity as it were with the over or undershoot at the beginning and the end so you can do that really easily with this and then we've got these handles here so this is tilt so this will tilt that down so you can see where we are and you see the original inflection curve appearing so you've got some kind of idea and got exactly the same here as well now you may have noticed on the tool tip it says out to rotate so if you do that it will do one or the other up so these are things that i've had to do a few times in the past not not much because generally i work with singers who will just go and do another take but sometimes you want to do that and this makes it much easier because there have been times when you, like, you end up chopping things up into loads of segments and then staircasing them to make them go up and down and this this is uh, a really great addition now the last thing is the anchor for that so obviously you can see where this is rotating or tilting it's tilting around that center and you can drag that to any point and you'll see quite easily that's the pivot point so those are the new controls on there and 
while I think most of the time you're probably just going to be in the default mode with those four handles, it makes it so much easier to use and so much quicker. Uh, I think this is a really, a really good improvement. Uh, one other thing is you can have a MIDI reference track. So I've just very quickly uh, extracted and play around with some MIDI, but sometimes you want a, a MIDI track to know uh, where a singer should be. But also, you don't always want it. You don't always want it 100 because often there will be inflections in a singer where they're they're maybe singing an F sharp, but they're leading up to etc. And if you made it all F sharp, it would sound horrendous. But anyway, you can just click on a MIDI track that you've got. So I'll just show you in the project window, there's some MIDI pitch which has just been uh, put in. And then you can use any MIDI tracks you've got in here as a reference. And then it will show you the pitches of those notes. So there, once we turn that on, we can see it's showing the, the MIDI pitches. So this can be useful if you've got something to map to and it's just a nice guideline to work to in terms of timing often and also pitch so that's the changes made to the vario audio tool so if you've not used vario audio before i'd encourage you to experiment with it both in terms of you know create in quotes creative stuff so you know highlighting everything and then just saying right we're going to quantize that and we're going to straighten the curve and then he's going to sound some folks in here stars sound like that or there's loads of creative corrections you can do which can just improve what is otherwise a great performance. I had something I mixed for somebody the other day that it was a fantastic performance apart from two notes where he'd just not quite hit it and then gone sharp sort of over correcting and managed to straighten that and it sounded it sounded great. So I don't think it's a case of removing all the humanity from it but sometimes there'll be a little slip or an error that you can fix and then take what is otherwise a really really great performance but would be unusable because of that and, and fix that so definitely have a play around with it obviously it works for monophonic instruments so it will work for things other than the voice as well but those are the changes for cubase 10 hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful if you've enjoyed this video please like it and subscribe to the channel also check out my book the complete guide to music technology using cubase 10 it provides you with a thorough grounding in all aspects of using Cubase, music technology and music theory. Follow the link for more information and to order a copy today. Thanks for watching.